This lecture is about the latent Dirichlet allocation, or LDA. In this lecture, we're going to continue talking about uh, topic models. In particular, we're going to talk about uh, some extension of PLSA. And uh, one of them is LDA, or latent Dirichlet allocation. So the plan for this lecture um, is to cover two things. One is to extend the PLSA uh, with prior knowledge. That would allow us to have, in some sense, a user-controlled PLSA. So it doesn't blindly just listen to data, but also uh, would listen to our needs. The second is to extend the PLSA as a generative model, a fully generative model. Um, this has led to the development of latent Dirichlet allocation, or LDA. So first, let's talk about the PLSA with prior knowledge. Now, in practice, when we apply PLSA to analyze text data, we might uh, have additional knowledge that we want to inject to guide the analysis. The standard PLSA is going to blindly listen to the data by using maximum likelihood estimator. We're going to just fit the data as much as we can and get some insight about data. This is also very useful, but sometimes a user might have some expectations about which topics to analyze. For example, we might expect to see retrieval models as a topic in information retrieval. We also may be interested in certain aspects such as battery and memory uh, when uh, looking at the opinions about a laptop because the user is particularly interested in these aspects. Now, a user may also have knowledge about the topic coverage. And we may know which topic is definitely not covered in which document or is covered in the document. For example, we might uh, have seen those uh, tags, topical tags assigned to the documents. And those tags could be treated as topics. If we do that, then a document can only be generated using topics corresponding to the tags already assigned to the document. If a document is not assigned a tag, we're going to say there's no way for uh, using uh, that uh, topic uh, to generate uh, the document. The document must be generated by using the topics uh, corresponding to the assigned tags. So the question is, how can we incorporate such knowledge into PLSA? It turns out that there's a, a very uh, elegant way of doing that, and that's to incorporate such knowledge as priors on the models. And you may recall in Bayesian uh, inference, we use prior together with data to uh, estimate parameters, and this is precisely what will happen. So in this case, we can use maximum a posteriori uh, estimate, also called a map estimate. And the formula is given here. Basically, it's to maximize the posterior distribution probability. And this is a combination of the likelihood of data and the prior. So what would happen is that we're going to have an estimate that listens to the data and also listens to our prior uh, preferences. We can use this prior, which is denoted as P of lambda, to encode all kinds of preferences and constraints. So for example, we can use this to encode the need of having precisely one background topic. Now, this can be encoded as a prior because we can say uh, the prior for the parameters is only non-zero if the parameters uh, contain one topic that's equivalent to the background language model. In other words, in other cases, uh, if it's not like that, we're going to say the prior says it's impossible. So the probability of that kind of um, model setting would be zero according to our prior. So uh, now we can also, uh, for example, use the prior to uh, force a particular choice of topic to have a probability of uh, a certain number. For example, we can force the document D to choose topic one with probability of one half. Or we can prevent a topic from being used in generated document. So we can say the third topic should not be used to generate the document D, and we set the pi value to zero for that topic. We can also use the prior to favor a set of parameters with topics that assign high probabilities to some particular words. In this case, we're not going to say it's impossible, but we're going to just strongly favor certain kind of distributions. And you will see example later. The map can be computed using a similar EM algorithm as we have used for the maximum likelihood estimator. 
with just some modification to smooth the parameters to reflect the prior uh, preferences. And in such an estimator, if we use a special form of the prior called a conjugate prior, then the functional form of the prior will be similar to the data. As a result, we can combine the two. And the consequence is that you can uh, in basically convert the inference of the prior into the inference of uh, having additional pseudo data because the two functional forms are the same and they can be combined so the effect is as if we had more data and this is convenient for uh, computation it doesn't mean conjugate prior is the best way to define prior so now let's look at the uh, at specific example suppose uh, the user is particularly interested in battery life of a laptop and we're analyzing reviews so the prior says that the, the distribution should contain one distribution that would assign high probabilities to battery and life so uh, we could to say well there's a distribution that's entirely concentrated on battery life and we, our prior says that the, one of your distributions should be very similar to this now if we use map uh, estimator um, with the conjugate prior, uh, which is Dirichlet prior, um, Dirichlet distribution based on this uh, this preference, then the only difference in the EM algorithm is in the M step. When we re-estimate world distributions, we are going to add additional counts um, to reflect our prior. Right. So here you can see uh, the uh, pseudo counts uh, are defined based on. The probability of words in our prior. So battery obviously will have a high pseudo count. Similarly, life would have also high pseudo counts. All the other words will have zero pseudo counts because their probability is zero in the prior. And you see this is also controlled by a parameter mu. And we are going to add a, a mu multiplied by the probability of W given uh, our prior distribution to the collected counts when we re-estimate the when we re-estimate the this uh, word distribution right so this is the only step that's changed and the change happened here and before we just collect the counts of words that we believe have been generated from this topic but now we force this uh, distribution to give more probabilities to these words by adding them to the pseudo counts so to artificially uh, in, in fact, we artificially inflate their probabilities. And in, to make this a distribution, we also need to add uh, this many pseudo counts to the denominator. And this is the total sum of all the pseudo counts we have added for all the words. This would make this again a distribution. Now, this is an uh, intuitively very reasonable way of modifying EM algorithm. And theoretically speaking, this still works and it computes the map estimator. It's useful to think about uh, two uh, specific uh, extreme cases of mu. Now, look at the picture. Think about uh, what would happen if we set mu to zero. Well, that's essentially to remove this prior. So mu, in some sense, indicates our strength on prior. Now, what would happen if we set mu to positive infinity? Well, that's to say the prior is so strong that we're not going to listen to the data at all. So in the end, you can see in this case, we're going to make uh, one distribution fixed to the prior. You see why? When mu is infinity, we basically let this one dominate. In fact, we're going to set this one to precise this distribution. So in this case, it is this distribution. And that's why we said the background language model is in fact a way to impose a prior because we force one distribution to be exactly the same as what we give, that's the background distribution. So in this case, we can even force the distribution to entirely focus on battery life. But of course, this won't work well because it cannot attract other words. It would affect the accuracy of counting topics about the battery life. So in practice, mu is set uh, somewhere in between, of course. So this is one way to impose our prior. Um, it, we can also impose um, some other constraints. For example, we can set any parameters to a constant, including zero as needed. For example, we may want to set one of the pi's to zero. And this would mean we don't allow that topic to participate in generating that, that document. And this is only reasonable, of course, when we 
uh, have uh, prior knowledge that strongly suggests this. Mm -hmm.